Hey everyone, this is Joseph from SlotDataEngineering.com. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about common table expressions and how you can use them in a data warehouse. We will also look at its performance compared to temp table based approaches and subquery and derived table based approaches. So let's get started. As always, if you'd like to follow this along in the blog format, I'll leave the link in the description below. The blog contains the code snippet and also the instructions, so you can follow that as well if you prefer. Um, and if you'd like to follow along, by setting up your own Redshift instance, you would need to install or have an AWS account, have AWS CLI installed and configured. You would also need PGCLI, to con which we are going to use to connect to a Redshift, in Redshift instance. <coughs> so the first command would be to create a Redshift cluster. So you can use AWS CLI in Redshift create cluster to create your Redshift cluster. If you notice here, we are creating a DC to large node cluster with two nodes. We specify a username and password and we set the cluster identifier to be SDE sample cluster. I've already created a cluster. Once you run this command, you would have to wait about three to five minutes for your cluster to be ready to use. Since I've already created, I'm just going to do this describe cluster command, which you can use to access the address, which is our host endpoint uh, to be used for PGCLI connection. So let's say PGCLI host, paste that, and username and password, uh, sorry, username, port, database, are these. The database, you'll notice we haven't specified here. It's created by default. Um, you can change it if you want while you're creating the cluster as well. So do that and password is password1234. Just going to do that. Alright, so now we are connected to our Redshift instance. So let's assume you work for a company uh, that tracks user data such as clickstream data, geolocation data, financial data, etc. And uh, for this video, we are going to concentrate on clickstream and geolocation type data for our use case so where we see how to use CTEs. So let's say you have a clickstream table with event ID, user ID, session ID, action type, and data created. So basically what this means is when you perform any sort of like click, login action, or logout action, or purchase action, say in an e-commerce website, it'll be um, recorded as a single row or a single event. That's what this uh, table denotes. Event ID will be a unique identifier or UUID <coughs> that is unique to each event. User ID will obviously be unique to a user. Session ID will probably be unique for that uh, login session you are logged into. And then action type can be click, buy, login, logout, etc. Data created specifies when your um, event was created. So let's create that. <coughs> let's insert some fake data in there. Again, um, these are available in my blog, so you can copy over the fake data from there as well. The second table we are going to be creating is called the geolocation data. It's a very naive geolocation data where you have a user ID and an associated zip code and the date time that event was created. So let's assume this geolocation is triggered or created by uh, your cell phone pings to your cell phone tower, or to the nearby cell phone tower. So if you're moving around, you'll have multiple zip codes per user ID. Again, this is a very naive table. In reality, these sort of uh, data sets have multiple um, attributes. Space some, create some fake data in there. All right, so now we have our geolocation data and our clickstream data set up. Let's look at an example um, of w w where to use a common table expression. <coughs> Let's assume you want to get the user ID, a number of purchases that user made a purchase is considered uh, as a buy event in the clickstream from the clickstream table, right? But you only want users who have been in multiple locations. Multiple locations in our use case, let's consider m multiple zip codes to be multiple locations. So how would you do it? You would do something like select, oh, I actually have this here. So you would select user ID and you count the number of buys from that clickstream while making sure that user has been in more than one distinct zip code and also has more than or greater than or equal to and has, has at least one purchase. This is basically how you calculate that. Let's go ahead and paste that. So you see three users. Everyone has, uh, so user one has two, user three has one purchase, user two has a single purchase and they have been in multiple zip codes. You can see like user 2 has been into unique zip codes and you can verify the rest as well for 1 or 2. So now let's see how you could write this in CTE form. 
So CD is basically a way of defining a temporary table that is only available for the duration of that specific select statement. So you can think of it as moving this selected portion to above the select query. So let's look at how we could do that. So you use something called width, which is used to define the CTE for that select statement. So use it, let's say width. Let's actually split it out into two. So we could also split out the buying users. So let's say split buying users as um, it's basically this query, right? Select user ID from clickstream. Um, group by having. So you can see like we are essentially splitting up the query into a separate um, CTE. So you can define multiple CTEs per select query. So we are defining with buying user and then you put a comma and then you... Oh, what did I do? Something is wrong. Syntax. I guess I'll have to just type it out. So moving user, we can define moving user as um, a user who has been in more than one zip code, which is basically defined by this query right here. Let's copy that over. And wait, wait. Zip code, okay. And now we can do a select um, buying user dot user ID. Come on, buying user dot number of purchase because that's what we want. So let's um, from buying user users you while making sure that those user IDs are part of moving users so you can say join mu on buying user dot user ID so So basically, you can see that we have replaced an inquiry with a join, which basically does gives us the same results. So you saw how we took a query, which was using the subquery-based approach, and pulled that subquery into its separate CTE called moving users in this case. We, you can imagine a very complex query with multiple subqueries and getting very complicated so you can pull those subqueries into individual CTEs which would uh, enable you know better readability which is a kind of objective but it would enable better readability and also the ability to do use the same subquery in multiple joints so now we have seen how to use CTEs let's consider the performance of CTE relative to uh, derived table based approach, temp table based approach as well. For that, um, let's consider a more complicated ask. Let's say you want to find, you want to get all the users who have, again who have been in multiple locations and have purchased at least one product, but this time instead of user level metric, you want metrics, you want user session level metrics, and you want to get the number of clicks and logins along with the number of purchases. So your output should be something like this, user ID and session ID, and number of clicks, number of logins, number of purchases for that user session combination. <coughs> so for CTE, you can imagine something same as what we had before. You had purchasing user, or I'm calling it buying user here, but basically you have a pur users who buy stuff, you know, having number of purchases greater than one, user who move, and finally, we do something called user session metrics. What this is, is it's basically an aggregate of user session level uh, to give it the, get us the number of clicks, logins, and purchases. We are grouping by user ID and session. And finally, we join those three. So let's take a look at that. All right, so you see one, two, and three has all these metrics. And you have number of logins here, number of one. This should be um, correspond to one having two purchases, two having one purchase, three having one purchase, which corresponds to this one having two purchase, three having one purchase, and two having one purchase. So let's see. Let's look at uh, the explain query to understand the performance of this CTE-based approach.
To understand performance of any query, you usually look at the query plan, um, which is uh, got by putting an explain in front of the query. But before we do the query plan, we want to run a command called analyze on the tables that are being used in this query. And this is because analyze will update the table statistics, which means it enables better and more accurate and a more accurate query plan. So in order to do that, you can say analyze geolocation and analyze clickstream data because those are the tables we are using in these queries. So let's copy this query over and put an explain in front of it. Alright, you can see the query. Um, it's kind of hard to read here, but if you look at the image on the left side of the screen, you will see that there are three sections. One is calculating the moving user, the other one is calculating the purchasing user. So what happens is moving users and purchasing users are calculated in parallel, while simultaneously user session metrics is also calculated. And then moving user and purchasing user are joined together using a hash join, which is then joined with user session metrics. <coughs> so you can see how, how it's being parallelized in Redshift. So a subquery and derived table uh, based performance will be very similar, if not the same, as CTE, because CTE essentially does the same thing. It's just putting the queries on top of the select query for better readability and reusability. So again, this is pretty much the same query that we had before, um, but ad with the additional of with the addition of user session metrics. And uh, if you want to look at the code, you can look at the you can go to the blog. So let's run this. It gives the same result. So let's try to explain this. Okay, let's look at the image on the left hand side. So if you look at the explain here, it's a little bit different. Basically, the user session met session metrics and purchasing user uh, are calculated. The, the they have been swapped compared to the CTE based approach, and that's just the query planner um, figuring out what's the best way to run this query for optimal performance. <coughs> Having said that, it pretty much does the same thing. I mean, it, it calculates user session metrics the same way and purchasing users the same way, and you're not waiting on anything and it's parallelized. And one thing to note is the cost is, is not absolute, meaning you cannot compare costs between two execution plans. A cost is relative to all those individual steps in those execution plans. So what that means is it's 98 and 1.26. <coughs> It's, it's a combination of this 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.7, and uh, all the below costs. So just keep that in mind. The final approach is a temp table based approach. So up until now, we have been using subqueries or CTEs. The, the approach there is create those CTEs or subqueries only during um, during, the du during the run of that select statement that you're running. But the downside is you cannot reuse those subqueries anywhere else. It only exists for that select statement. But if you have a use case where you're going to be using these subqueries multiple times in multiple select statements, it would be better to create temporary table once and then reuse them multiple times instead of having to create them each time as a subquery or as a CTE. <coughs> so this is the um, kind of format for creating a temporary table. So here we basically create three temporary tables. Let's copy that over. If you notice here, we are using something called a distribution key. In Redshift, it's um, the hash, or the, the key by which the data is distributed across the cluster. And we use user ID because that's the join key, and that will optimize for better joins and minimize shuffles in distributed systems. So let's do the select here. Should give us the same result. If you do a quick explain, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, you will see that the number of steps are much lower, like there's no filter or anything, it's just hash and hash joins. This is because we have done the filtering, done the aggregation during the creation of the temp tables. So if you look at the explain, uh, the query plan of individual temp tables, you, you can see the filtering and you can see the aggregation. And that's why at select time, using temp tables might be faster. Do a quick recap of the trade-offs. So the trade-off between CD and subquery 
is that in terms of performance, they're almost the same. In terms of readability, some people prefer CTEs because you clearly define um, those subsets or subqueries about the select statement, and you, it also enables multiple joins on the same subquery or on or again. <coughs> so when it comes to temp table based approaches, it's preferred if you are using the same temp table across multiple queries. And in, so instead of having to create that subquery or that subset for each query, you can create temporary table once and reuse them. But there is also the cost of distributing the table. So you'll have to make your trade-off depending on your specific use case. In general, always check the query plan for competing approaches because uh, CTE optimizations are very database dependent. I think in older Postgres, CTEs were not optimized along with the query planner, but in the newer ones they are. So it's always uh, best to just check the query plans before using them. And finally, don't forget to switch off your cluster because it costs money. Switch that off. Okay. All right. So I hope this helps you understand what a CTE is, how to use them, and how uh, how what the performance trade-offs are compared to derived table, subquery, and temp table based approaches. If this uh, video helped you in some way, if you learned something new, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. It really helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for listening.